Okay, I just went through this thing a couple of weeks back in the Classic 350 and this is the one that put me on the arse. Yet. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so that's twice. <laughs> oh dear. Okay guys, another day, another workout. So here we are today with the um, V-Strom 250SX. Now, this is just a recap of what happened yesterday. For some reason, I don't know bloody why, I thought seeing I had these tyres on, I might be able to go down that same track again where I uh, took the Classic 350 Reborn and see how it runs over that bit of a muddy section. Well, by now you would have seen the results of that, and it ran over it pretty good. Um, and uh, I scored a second knockdown again, so um, happened a little bit quick there too. I don't think these tyres went through any better than the other one, and uh, I'm seriously thinking I'm not going back down there anymore, because who would have thought the exact spot, same place, looked about the same, and it is one misleading bit of track when you go along there on, on bikes, or it has been for me. Now that was all right. Once I got that bike up, I had a bit of a problem there too because my uh, foot or left foot got caught up when I went down on this racky and it was jammed between here and the ground, which wasn't too good. It took a little bit to get that leg out of there and um, after that, actually it's a bit sore today, you know, one day or almost a day later. But the um, problem was then, uh, these weigh about 170 kilos and when it went down into that mud it actually dug into the mud too and really I, I just couldn't move this bike to get it out of there i was stuffed there was no risk whatsoever i was history so after i'd been filming there half an hour trying to pull the thing out uh, i decided uh, i'll go up on the road well that was all right i decided to get up there first off and see if i could weigh someone down now bloody no one wanted to stop for me going along there you would know who was coming out of the scrub there so I thought, uh, maybe it'd be better if I go back down and get my crash helmet and come up and it looks like I'm just not some deviant on the side of the road ready to bump someone off. So uh, uh, the story is I went back down and got it. Then sure enough, got out there with the crash helmet, give them a bit of a wave where they come past, a couple of them passed, and then all of a sudden one pulled over and I headed off down the road there to uh, have a look. 
Only problem was, uh, the driver, surprisingly, was a woman. And uh, uh, I said, ah, uh, something to the effect, uh, oh, look, sorry about that. I thought a guy would have been driving this and he could have come in and helped me get my motorbike. It's stuck in the scrub there. And she said to me then, uh, oh, yeah, I could give you a hand if you want. And <laughs> I sort of looked at her and she was really a well-dressed woman. She said, I'm fairly strong, you know. And I said, look, honestly, I couldn't bring you in there to help me get out of the motorbike, which I put in there on my own fault. I said, um, no, no, no. I said, look, thanks very much for coming and uh, doing a doing me a favour and pulling over, but uh, we'll pass on this one, but uh, I appreciate the fact you pulled up and that, but I just won't take you into the scrub there to see if you can help me get that motorbike out, because I said, those clothes won't be as clean as what you're wearing now. So uh, apart from that, she, you know, seemed fairly happy that she pulled up and seen what was going on, and I let her go on away. So a couple more cars passed, and I uh, flagged over this other guy. Now. He came there and he, he was in a pretty new four-wheel drive and uh, I told him what was going on and he parked his car on the side of the road and I was only thinking this on the way home, w what a risky move if somebody come out of the scrub and just waved you down like that and said I've got a motorbike on its tail in there and remember you can't see it from the road, it's right in the scrub there area so when he pulled up and said where is it and I pointed and you couldn't see anything, it was right in there, so you wouldn't know if there were two or three blokes in there waiting when you come in, bump you over, and get in your new four-wheel drive and piss off ski. So, as far as things go, he, you know, did the right thing and decided he'd come down and have a look, which I appreciated. And we walked down there, and he too was local from where I am, but we didn't know each other. And um, as far as that goes, we got down there, and he got hold of the front of the bike, and I got hold of the back, and the bike was out of that mud... I don't know, under 10 seconds, I'd say, and everything was well. So uh, apart from that, then I uh, so he said, kick it over. And I went to kick it over, and my gear shifter was totally bent up and locked in position, and I, I just couldn't move it into gear. But I did press the um, turner on, press the starter, and it did actually kick over immediately straight away with no cell lights or any sort of, you know, tip over light, anything about it, roll over light. So... Um, as far as that goes, it started straight away, but I'll just show you here now. I've cleaned it up a little bit now because I've been working on it. There's a bit of a story behind this too. So this is a normal position. When I picked it up off the ground, it was jammed right up there somehow. So it was back around. Pretty hard to do this one here. It was somewhere up about there. So you can't get it now because it's just, I can't hold it one hand, but it was jammed there like that and could could not get it out of gear. So uh, it was jammed there in second. So I said to the bloke, I might have to go and get me high ace and bring out and get it. Uh, he said, if you're in second gear, when we checked on the counter, I suppose that come in handy. He said, you should be able to ride this home in second if you just ride it slow. So. I thought Dave what he said and then by the time, you know, there was no phone reception where I was either so I tried trying the phone to see if I could ring up the daughter to come out and bring me high ace out and collect it but not the case, no phone reception in the area and I tried a different high spot so nothing at all. So apart from that, that's what happened. So I rode at home in second, it was only three degrees so it wasn't um, a hot day by any means and I'd give it a rest halfway home and then carried on from there. So I, uh, meanwhile, when it did hit the ground, these have got plastic uh, knuckle guards, so that one snapped off. And I don't really know until I wash the bike of anything else. So, and this, um, like I said, a gear shifter. Now, believe it or not, I was just playing around with this gear shifter this morning and I had to go and get a flu shot because that's here in Australia, you know, they're keen on getting flu shots and stuff like that. So, I undone the bolt here and sat it on the ground there and just arrived back and it's missing and I'd say a magpie come in and took that bolt that was sitting there because I recall sitting it just here on that because I thought I'd only be about half hour and I got a bit of sore arm too. And um, so that's gone now so I can't really get there and 
put this back together even if I get the uh, correct position because I'll have to pull that shaft off now, take it up to one of the local bolt places and see if they've got a, a, uh, a bolt that will fit in there okay. So apart from that, you can see the, the bike's a little bit messy so I'm going to give it a wash up, clean it up, have a close look at this handguard here, see if I can get the bolt down there, break there. Maybe I'm not sure, I think the steering got a little bit off course too. That, I wouldn't say that was from the fall, I would think that was me trying to pull it around when it was on the ground. But not much I can do about this now because the fact is I went out there, I went down that track again and paid the price and I'll have to be very careful if I think I'm going to go back there for the third time. This time when I went down, I actually went down a little bit quicker than before because I thought with these tyres here I would have got through but not the case. The, wire, the ride on it this time was wilder than the first time and because the bike sits three inches higher than that classic 350 I think it was a little bit more harder to control and because of the depth in it if you look down here you know it's a might be only 170 kilos but it's got some height in it and with a full tank of petrol from the dealer everything was probably against it and, and a pity too because really I, I really am kicking myself going down that track because the bike was running so good, really beautiful on the way out. This is really, really a good bike. And to get out there and dump it like this and cause that problem, geez, I was sort of pissed off about it. In fact, I was actually thinking after I come back, I was going <laughs> to clean it up and cash it, be, see if I could get a certain amount of figure for it and then go and buy another one. But I don't know. For one, I don't think you'll get one anywhere else. And number two, I've got to try it out first and see, I suppose, now what happens. But... I wasn't real happy because, as a rule, I've never damaged any of the bikes here and uh, they're all in mint condition and that's how I like to have the stuff. I mightn't clean them much, but I do like them in mint condition. So, um, but this gives you an idea, really, plastic handguards are nothing to get excited about. I might have a go at sort of try a plastic weld on this handguard later on, see if I can get it in position. That's one thing I'm going to do. If I can get the um, nut there what I require on that after I give the bike a wash up and see if I'm not carrying any scratches from the from the drop to the ground and we'll go from there and then I'll be able to see on a test ride what I really think afterwards so apart from that that's what we're up to at the moment and I'll get back to you after clean the bike up oh yeah guys I thought I'd mention it too that um, if it wasn't for that guy come to the party and uh, into the paddock there and help me get that, um, you know, the Suzuki 250SX up off the ground. I definitely would have been there. Yeah, like I said, no chance of getting it out. I would have had to hitchhike home and get someone to come back with me and lift it up off the ground. Actual fact, apart from telling him I uh, appreciate it, thanks very much for helping me out and doing it. I even said to him near the end, I have had to give you 20 bucks for your trouble, but uh, no, nah, didn't want to take any dollars or anything like that. And, you know, like he said, he was really happy to help somebody out under a situation like that. He handled it no different than I would have handled it. If somebody would have been in a situation like that, I wouldn't have took anything off them either, regardless. But over the years, I've had plenty of people who will jump at the opportunity to relieve me of a dollar, but that's how it goes. But on that day, you know, he's a really good bloke, and pity I never got his name or where he is, so I would have uh, repaid the favour regardless some other way but uh, apart from that the idea now is get into this and have a look at it and sort of clean it up and just see if I can uh, fix up a little bit of this damage and then get a spare bolt for it see what I can do with that hand guard and see if it goes after a test ride everything it changes gears and everything like that and all good so that's the plan at the moment so next up bit of a wash <laughs> 